Welcome to the EPICS Design Lab at Purdue, where innovation meets practical application. Before we dive into the use of our equipment, let's talk about lab safety. Lab safety is our top priority. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment, including safety glasses and hearing protection when necessary. Keep loose clothing and hair tied back and remove any jewelry that can get caught in the machinery. Familiarize yourself with the location of tool power switches and how they work. Remember, safety is a practice, not just a protocol. Today, we're focusing on the Masterforce 12 inch variable speed bench drill press. This versatile tool is essential for, for, for a precise drilling task and is equipped with features like a laser guide, integrated LED work light, and a digital display of RPM speed. Now let's talk about the switches on the drill press. There are several switches that control different functions of the machine. Let's take a closer look at these switches. The main power switch here serves as the on, off, or e-stop, also known as the emergency stop switch. To start the machine, flip the switch upwards. To turn off the machine, simply press the switch downwards. This switch is a critical component of the drill press controlling the power to the motor. Located on the front of the drill press, this switch is easily accessible for quick operation. The spindle will begin to rotate and allow you to drill on your workpiece. When your task is complete, use the same switch to turn the motor, halting the spindle's operation. The work light switch is located directly below the main power switch on the left. This controls the LED work light which illuminates the work area for better visibility. Simply flip the switch up to turn the light on or off as needed. Please turn the light off when you are finished to save the bulb. The laser crosshairs is located on the right side below the main power switch. This activates the laser guide on the table so that you can align your workpiece. Again, flip the switch to turn the laser on or off. Remember, Never look directly into the laser beam and use it as a guide for your workpiece. By familiarizing yourself with these switches, you can operate the drill press more efficiently and safely. Always ensure that the work light and laser are turned off when you're finished to conserve energy and to extend the life of the machine. Understanding the levers in addition to the switches, the drill press is equipped with levers that control the drill's movement and speed. Let's break down their functions. The feed levers are located on the right side of the machine. These handles allow you to raise and lower the drill bit in and out of the material you're drilling. To operate, grasp the handles and apply a gentle steady pressure in the counterclockwise direction to advance the drill bit. Release the pressure to return the bit to its starting position. The feed handles give you precise control over the drilling depth and speed of penetration. The depth guide is located on the left side of the machine. The depth guide has movable nuts that allow you to stop the travel of the drill bit and you can adjust them. I have set this up to allow the maximum travel of the drill head and lock the nuts together to prevent students from breaking the machine by trying to force the drill head downwards with the feed handles. If you do need to use this feature, Simply set up your drilling operation, but you must return the nut to its maximum travel distance so others don't break the machine due to not setting the machine up properly for use. Next, I will talk about the speed adjustment. The speed adjustment lever is located on the left side of the drill press. This lever is used to change the spindle speed, which you should be adjusted according to the material you are drilling and the size of the drill bit. For example, to drill wood, you need to turn it on and run it at a slower RPM than for metals. To adjust the speed, move the speed adjustment lever away from you to reduce the RPM of the spindle and towards you to increase the RPM of the spindle. It is always advised to start the RPM at the lowest or the slowest speed and then go faster as the material that you're drilling requires. The Masterforce drill press offers a variable speed range from 550 to 3100 RPM, allowing you to match the speed of the task at hand. It's important to select the correct speed for your material to prevent damage to the drill bit and ensure efficient drilling. 
you can see drilling RPM suggestions if you are unsure of what speed you should drill for your material. Our drill press is equipped with safety shield. The safety shield is mounted directly on the column. It swings up and out of the way for changing the drill bit, making it convenient without compromising safety. Hold on to the drill shield while raising and lowering it and be gentle on the shield because it is made out of plastic. The chuck safety shield is a vital component of the drill press designed to keep you safe by preventing the chuck being left in the chuck or let getting holding tangled with the chuck. Always ensure the shield is lowered gently into place and properly secure before beginning any drilling operation. The safety shield on our drill press is not just a piece of equipment. It's a critical safety feature designed to protect you from contact with rotating parts. To install drill bits, ensure the drill press is turned off. Open the chuck draws by rotating the barrel counterclockwise. Insert the sh shank of the drill bit into the um, chuck with the smooth parts of the drill bit making contact with the jaws of the chuck. Tighten the chuck jaws clockwise with the chuck key to ensure that the chuck is tight with the drill bit. You can use all three holes to make sure that the drill bit is secure. Immediately remove the chuck key once you're done tightening to avoid accidents when starting the drill press. Chuck key management is crucial to keeping the chuck key in a designated place when not in use to prevent from getting lost or causing a safety hazard. After you're done tightening the chuck jaws, you should attach it back to the right side of the drill press and never leave the chuck key in the chuck. Next, to operate the drill press, select the appropriate bit for your material and securely fasten it into the chuck. Adjust the table height and the drill press speed here, and the height can be adjusted using this handle, and then there is a lock on the left side over here to lock the table into place. The digital readout of the RPM will show the current RPM of the spindle speed, allowing the motor to adjust its RPMs accurately, start the drill press, lift the power switch, and the spindle will begin to rotate. Keep an eye on the RPM spring as you adjust the speed to ensure you're drilling at the optimal rate for your specific task. The precise control over the RPMs not only improves the quality of your drilling, but also extends the life of your drill bits and the drill press itself. We have a drill press vise. The drill press vise will allow you to hold your workpiece while drilling if you need to hold a small piece. The drill press vise is very heavy, so be careful when lifting it up onto the drill table. Put your workpiece into the vise and open up the jaws. You can do this by turning the handle or lifting the dog and getting your workpiece to sit into the jaws. Position the vise on the table and the drill press table aligning it with the drill bit. Ensure that it's square to the drill bit for accurate drilling. You may need to adjust the drill press table from side to side, up and down to align the drill path with the workpiece. Consider securing the vise on the drill press table by using a metal C-clamp. The C-clamp here can um, tighten the vise onto the drill press table. And remember, the vise is heavy, so do not drop it and injure yourself. In most cases, the vise is heavy enough just sitting on the table to drill the workpiece, but the clamp does allow you to fasten it to the table for work that might require uh, lots of force. 
Also make sure the drill press table again is in position and the clamp is tightened down. This provides, prevents the vise from moving during the drilling operation. By using the drill press vise, you enhance both safety and precision in your drilling operation. If you are clamping your workpiece, check that the workpiece is properly secured before starting any of the drilling operations. You can use the bar clamps and make sure to use short ones so that they do not interfere with the drill bit or the drill head as they move down. So if you are not using the vise and need to use the clamps, you can use these bar clamps to clamp your workpiece onto the table to allow you to hold anything in place as you are drilling. Cleaning and organizing after you have used the drill press ensures the machine's longevity and readiness for the next user. Follow these cleaning and organization tips. Always make sure the drill press is turned off. Clean your area here of the machine. We have brushes and dust pans in the lab here to remove metal and wood shavings. And so you can remove the debris from the drill table and surrounding areas. Remove the drill bit from the chuck and return it to its designated storage location or the drill index that it came from. There are drills located in the drill index on the side of the drill press here on the table for ease of operation and accessibility. We have other drill bits that are in the lab here that are available for use, such as wood paddle bits, hole saws of different varieties. When you use those, make sure to return those drill bits to their proper location and storage location. Ensure all tools and accessories used with the drill press are cleaned and returned to their proper places by adhering to these steps you contribute to a clean, safe, and efficient working environment, ready for the next project team. Maintenance and troubleshooting, this information is only provided for awareness, and we do not want students performing maintenance on the drill press. The lab manager, myself, Brandon, will provide this service, but if the maintenance or the machine does not seem to operate, operate correctly, sounds funny, or appears to be broken or damaged, immediately notify the lab manager. Regular maintenance is key to the longevity of the drill press. Always keep the drill press clean and free of debris. Immediately inform the lab manager if you see the drill press making any irregular noises or not functioning well, even if you are the cause. This is a safety concern for others coming into the lab after you. Here are some do's and don'ts for the drill press. Do check that the drill bit is sharp and ready and does not have any damage before use. Use clamps or a vise to secure your workpiece if it is too small to safely hold by drilling. Start the drill at a slow speed and gradually increase as needed. Use the laser guide to align your drilling point accuracy. Never leave the drill press unattended and running. Avoid forcing the workpiece into the drill. Let the workpiece or let the drill do the work of the drilling. Do not wear gloves as they can get caught in the rotating parts. Never make adjustments while the drill press is running. Adjustments of the speed is required to made while the drill is running. That is the only adjustment that can be made while the machine is running. By following these guidelines, you ensure that the drill press is used safely and effectively, maintaining its condition for future use by student projects. Remember, proper use not only extends the life of the tool, but also ensures the safety and efficiency of your work. Thank you for contributing to the culture of safety and ex excellence here at Purdue's Epics Lab.